the video is meant to imply, you know, they stopped dressing for men and they started dressing for themselves and they stopped dressing for the male gaze and now they're completely liberated. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> if only liberation were as easy as to lie in a TikTok. Okay, here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Eh. Hello beautiful people and welcome back to another episode of Mixed Feelings. I'm your host, Kira Bria. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm actually feeling pretty good today. Pretty good today. And I think the reason why is literally just because I started reading again. If you watched the last episode or listened to the last episode, you would have heard me talk about like I bought, I bought four fiction books because I realized all of my books were like get your shit together books, which is just like not motivating to read a lot of the time. Because when you want to read for fun, you don't want to like read about how to get better in yourself. You just want to read for fun. And I read Normal People, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, read it in maybe like a week and a half, which is the fastest I've read a book since I was younger. I used to read, I used to read 24 seven, like in school, after school, before dance, on the way to dance, walking to school, walking home from school, like, and that was a good time. And then I think I got a phone. I saw a tic TikTok where this girl said, your phone is eating your brain. And I was like, correct. Because like, I was not this, I mean, granted I was going through my teenage years after that time when I got a phone, like I got a phone when I was maybe like 15, I think. And obviously, like, that's not a nice time to be alive. Um, and I went to Catholic school. That was before I switched. It, I realized that, honestly, okay, this brings me to our weekly words, weekly words of wisdom. I haven't 100% decided what I'm gonna title it, but I think that's it, maybe. It brings me to my weekly words of wisdom, which is time with myself is well spent because I just have been doing a lot of reflecting, unpacking, as you would say. Um, and like, you know, I'm an only child. Well, I was raised an only child. I'm not actually an only child, but I was raised alone. And I've always spent a lot of time alone. And because of that, I feel like when I grew up, I was like, oh, like I should always be around people because, you know, I, I was like kind of lonely growing up, to be honest. I always imagined like when I lived alone like i'd always be hanging out with people but like if you're an adult who like lives alone in her early 20s especially if you've like kind of moved recently which i did like i went to school in a different country and city you know what i mean so like uh if you live in that place then you can graduate and then you have all your friends and that's amazing but if you graduate and you move somewhere else you probably don't have a lot of friends right especially if you've kind of outgrown the people that you knew in high school like the friends i have now i've made very recently for the most part i realized like because i grew up alone i think i like don't view it as worthy of my time in a weird way like i think it, it it's like a no, honestly like if i'm really reflecting like i had i always had such a big fear of like missing out like missing out on events and like things people were doing and i really do think that i just like felt like being with myself and being alone was like a waste of my time because I am an extrovert though so this is that's the thing where I'm like I get why I feel that way because I really do get energy from other people and from like being with other people um but like I I actually do like hanging out with myself if I like let myself enjoy it and I'm not just like thinking about how I'd rather be doing something else do you know what I mean so I just like I just had to make that sort of affirmation so that I remind myself like, bitch, you're cool. Like it's fun. It's relax. You're okay. Like you can stay home and watch Night Teeth and bake cookies. Like it's fine. Relax. So I hope, I hope that helps. <laughs> I really hope that helps. Um, okay, recommendations of the week are Night Teeth. Night teeth, get get the Pillsbury like 
what are they called? I don't know what you call them, like the Halloween cookies, or I have the pumpkin spice. I think it's like pumpkin spice and white chocolate. I haven't made them yet, I'm gonna make them later today. I think it's pumpkin spice and white chocolate cookies. Get, get yourself some like fun. I have to remember to stop talking with my hands so much because the mic is over here and I'm like covering the, can you hear it? Can you <laughs> I'm like covering the mic as I gesticulate. Let me use my left hand. Um, buy yourself some nice Halloween slash fall autumn themed cookies, some autumnal cookies and put them in the oven and then put a Halloween movie on such as Night Teeth or Halloween Town. Those are my recommendations for this week. That's what I watched this week. <laughs> That's what I watched this week. And I realized the recommendations can be more than shows because I think it's good to recommend cookies. I, I haven't heard anyone do that. Only bad bitches recommend cookies. Let's go. Um, yeah, I think you can probably hear the baby crying. I can't do anything about that, I'm sorry. But today's episode is on the non-existence of the female gaze. Um, the female gaze does not exist. And in this essay, I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to explain why. Because, okay, it all started with this trend. Can't play the music for copyright purposes, but it's Champagne Problems by Taylor Swift, 2016 dresses, Hooters gear, and drop your hand while dancing, male gaze is no more, I'm a liberated woman now. Basically the trend is like, when I stop dressing for the male gaze and it's like pictures of them in like 2016, they'll, they'll put a few pictures of them kind of in that era, very much 2016, H&M, Urban Planet, type vibes. Notice I said Urban Planet and not Urban Outfitters. If you are not Canadian, you might not know what Urban Planet is. I don't think they have it there, um, but it is not Urban Outfitters. I would like to make that clear. This is a very distinct Canadian reference and I'm not talking about cool stuff from Urban Outfitters, okay? I used to work there and they actually didn't pay me my last check, so I can talk shit about them if I want. So yeah, they just post a few pictures of themselves like that. And then it goes, you know, and then I stopped dressing for the male gaze and it's pictures of them almost always in like colorful clothing, like a crop top, a poofy cardigan and some baggy pants. Or sometimes it's a crop top and baggy pants. It's usually very colorful or like really oversized dresses, like more, more today's style is really what it is, is stuff that's trendy today. The video is meant to imply, you know, they stopped dressing for men and they started dressing for themselves and they stopped dressing for the male gaze and now they're completely liberated. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> if only liberation were as easy as to lie in a TikTok. Certainly these women have not escaped the male gaze and they have not successfully switch their operation system to under the female gaze because the female gaze does not exist and you know you see a lot of people talking about the female gaze these days and i've seen some men talk about it too and they're like this is what the female gaze is and they're like brother um but most of the time when i see people talk about the female gaze they mention timothy chalamet um they mention like I don't know. The idea just seems very, whenever I hear people talk about it, it sounds very white to me, which is part of the reason why it doesn't exist because all the examples are like, you know, the female gaze is watching Timothy Chalamet read on a terrace in France at 3 p.m. or 4.30 p.m. when it's golden hour and he sips his cappuccino and looks back at you and gives you a, like, Whatever, whatever. It's very, very white or like cottage core. Like it's just very, it's not really personally my vibe. So I was thinking about the female gaze, right? And then I was thinking about the male gaze. Um, and I, the male gaze for me is something that I don't investigate often because I think for me, it's just like inherently understood. Like it's, it, I remember I made a dance in college, it's called WASH, if anybody out here actually knows what it is. My professor told me that she really liked it because it felt like it was an absence 
of the male gaze for once because they didn't the dancers didn't really face the audience very much and I thought that was really cool I thought that was really cool because like I didn't intend to do that so it's very cool that it came across that way to me but um when I think of the male gaze I think of like that entity in your head that makes you like sit up taller and like fluff your hair and like manipulates your presentation of femininity to the outworld world whether somebody's watching or not whether someone's watching or not yes if you're in the presence of men you're probably gonna feel it more ah, actually i don't know because i was just thinking about being around women and i i really don't think it goes away i really don't think it goes especially around white women um but it's that voice in your head that makes you manipulate your behavior to cater to a man who would be watching even if there isn't one watching. That's what the male gaze is for me in my head. And then when I pictured the female gaze, I was like, yeah, I don't think men have a voice uh, of a woman in their head telling them how to appear more attractive to women. I really don't think that's the case. I cannot picture that in a million years. Right? And I posted that video on TikTok and some people were like, yeah, men have a ma another man in their head manipulating their behavior. And I was like, mm, you're onto something there. And then we, I did a live with Nona and she was saying, she was saying, yeah, everybody has a white man in their head, even black men. And she was talking about how she had this, she had two black friends in college and they were like having a conversation. She, she probably had two, more than two black friends in college but in the room. Um, <laughs> two black male friends in the room and one of them had dated a black girl in high school or something and the other one was like but like didn't you like see her differently or something or didn't people look at you differently i think was what she said that he said and he was like nah like everybody was cool with it like she was pretty all this stuff apparently the guy was talking about how like he only dates white women as an escape from like his blackness and like he was saying like people look at you differently when you have a white woman on your arm and like it's like a sign of like res you get more respect and stuff like that things that are you know true <laughs> things that are true well depends who you're asking i would say but in general i know that a lot of people have that mentality and think that way and it's like yeah they have a white man in their head telling them what they would like to see and they cater to that white man in their head and that's that's how they date and then i was thinking i was like okay i think everybody has a white man in their head in, like including white man including white men because like even you know how like you you may have seen some of this discourse on tiktok or maybe not but um uh there are there are a lot of men who are attracted to fat women and they will do that in private, but they would never publicly date her. And I do think that the white man in their head is responsible for that because obviously he's fat phobic, obviously. Like the white man in the head is like the epitome of everything that's wrong with society, to be fair. So I think, you know, a lot of men base their behavior off of that white man in their head and they will do or not do things to try and impress that white man in their white man in their head and it's the whole it's the whole deal with men performing for other men and men performing masculinity and like you know the what men think is attractive in other men like the gym bros and the, the massive gym body and all that stuff like we've we've already talked about how that's not really what women look for or desire that's like very much a male gaze thing is like the gym bro um and the the other way that i think the man in their head really affects them and what i will say is i think the male gaze for men is a lot less invasive and it's a lot less consistent like for women i think it's there pretty much 100 percent of the time and you know sometimes like for me for me sometimes i'm aware of the man in my head that's you know, telling me that I need to stand a certain way or perf perform a certain way and I will ignore it because sometimes I'm aware of like, no, like you don't actually need to do that. But like, it's still there. You know what I mean? It's not that it turns off. I'm just more aware of it and I'm more aware, aware of what it does to me 
and I present myself with the choice when I do recognize it to, you know, comply or deny. Um, but I don't always, I'm not always that aware. And regardless if I am that aware, it's still there, right? And for men, I think the voice is a lot less invasive and a lot less frequent. I think when they're in vulnerable situations or emotional situations, it shows up the most and the loudest and the loudest. And that's coming from someone who has seen men cry. Who has seen men cry and see, have you ever seen a man cry and watched him, oh my goodness, hate himself so much for crying? Like be so upset with himself that he's crying like, what? <sighs> like they can't get it off of them. Like it's like, it's like, it's like fire. It feels like fire to them. Like they're like, ah, ah. Like, have you seen that? It's nuts. It's nuts. And that's why when, that's why when women are like, men can't be feminist and you know, men are the patriarch and I, and like, they don't believe that the patriarchy hurts men too. I was like, have you ever seen a man cry and hate himself for crying? Cause that's the patriarchy. That's the patriarchy on men. And anyway, um, but when you see that happen, that that's the voice. That's the voice in their head saying, shut up, shut up. Like your masculinity is in danger. Shut up, shut up. And that's when they, that's why they feel like they're on fire because they, they, their voice, the voice in their head is telling them that their entire reason for being alive, their entire masculinity, everything that's good about them is being threatened and is being contradicted by what is happening to them. They literally feel like they're dying. Like it's, it's crazy to see. I've seen, it, I've seen it more than once. I've seen it more than once. And obviously that doesn't happen for all men. Like some men can cry and be chill, but it's crazy to see how loud the voice in their head is when that happens, right? And I think also they're very unprepared for that to happen. They're very unprepared for how to respond to that, to that voice. They're probably not in therapy, so they're probably not aware of like all the things that the patriarchy does to them and does to their ego and how fragile it makes them. Did you see that trend on TikTok where the, <laughs> where the girl was like calling men short for fun and she went into different TikTokers lives, ones that were tall and just commented, we love a short king. And they were like, what? I'm not short, what? I'm li and they would stand up, they'd be like, I'm literally 6'2", what do you mean? I'm not short. That's the fragility of the male ego. Literally, all you have to do is threaten, threaten their perception of their masculinity and their alpha male identity, and they will shake. They will shake and shudder. Like, it is so easy. Every single time she went into the live and said, we love Short King, it, they just got so upset. And so what are, you, what are you talking about? Never call me short again, I'm six too. Like it was crazy. And that is the voice in their head. That is, that is the male gaze in their head, 100%. Because, oh my gosh, your identity should not hinge on your height in that way, right? Or hinge on your, your inability to, or your ability to resist tears. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that is the male gaze. The male gaze, the male gaze makes men value how, you know, they are seen and how their their significant others are seen and how their relationship is seen more than they value their relationship. Isn't that so sad? Like they are not dating. And it, this, I really do think, and obviously not all men do this. Obviously some men, you know, find a girl that they don't think they would normally be attracted to and fall in love with her and they get married and have kids and happily after blah, blah, blah. But do we think that's no, no, the norm? But I think it's very sad and I think it connects to my theory or not my theory, but when I was saying like, what men think about you has nothing to do with you. It's that and it's, it's that what men think of you not only has nothing to do with you, but has everything to do with the white man in their head and has everything to do with their performance of masculinity to impress other men slash impress the white man in their head. It all connects. I just, I'm just laying out the puzzle pieces right now in my life. And then one day, maybe I'll have most of them and I'll be able to create this picture that I can look at and be like, ah, I see and I know how to fix it. But right now I just have a couple puzzle pieces and this is what I do with them. So 
How is the camera possibly overheated? It's cold. So here's the thing. The female gaze cannot exist because our idea of the female gaze will inherently be in opposition to the male gaze, rendering it inauthentic, first of all. Second of all, in order, of, in order for us to like really know what the female gaze would be, we would all have to have like no internalized misogyny in us and like no internalized like like it it's pretty impossible to know because i feel like we would need to be honestly raised in a vacuum i just think it's pretty impossible to know what like women would naturally want to see unless we were like completely removed from society because living in society we're just like too influenced by the white man in our head and i don't like i don't fully trust what we think it is do you know what i'm saying that's what it is and it's also like no matter what we think it is it's not operating the same way the white man in our head is the way the male gaze is because it wouldn't infiltrate everybody so it just simply does not exist and there's a trend lately in media on the internet on tiktok of like trying so hard and so desperately to turn feminism into like trends and to use your feminism to make you look cool like you know when i stop dressing for the male gaze and like you know the venom trend and stuff like that and it's just like oh my god it's so you're watering it down first of all second of all it's just so lame it's just so lame stop trying to make feminism a trend like And just people are commodifying feminism at the end of the day. And that's why it's really corrupted and that's why, that's why people want to leave the movement and start their own movement, but enough people will join that next movement and they'll corrupt it. And enough people will make the next movement and white women will join the, that movement and probably corrupt it as well. So here we are. Here we are. Um, moving on to... <laughs> So I actually got some questions wanting my advice for this week's episode and I'm actually very excited and I want more of you to send those in because I think that they're fun and why not? If you got a problem, ask me. Okay, first question. Hey, I love your podcast, TikTok, everything. On your podcast, you said to send questions, so I was wondering if you can talk about the process of dismantling internalized misogyny in relation to dating, family, friends. I am the black sheep of my family. A lot of people and family would talk down to me and were covertly sexist. The only way to cope is to cut them off. Sometimes I wonder if I'm too harsh, but I don't know any other way to interact with these people. Also, the people who hang out with covert sexist people, I've cut them off too because I don't know what to do. Do you have any tips on learning how to assert yourself when necessary as a possi possible alternative to cutting people off and dealing with the lack of acceptance slash being labeled as too much? Or do you suggest not bothering with family that does not want to see my point of view? Sorry if that was a bit scattered trying my best to express my sentiment the best way I know how. I would also love to hear about your journey of dismantling internalized misogyny and interacting with the world if you are open to sharing. Thanks so much. Lots of love and gratitude to you. Okay, lots of love and gratitude to you as well. So with the family and friends that you cut off, I would say keep them cut. In my personal opinion, I would say keep them cut. You can find new friends. Like it, it's probably going to take a while, but I would say don't even surround yourself with those people. I think that's gonna drain your energy. I think they're gonna suck the life out of you. And same with family. Like when you can't, trust me, when you can't explain things to family, it's just leave it. Just leave it. it I, I mean, okay, it depends. And it also, I think depends how old they are. Like if they're, if it's your, great grandma or grandma and she is not seeing eye to eye on you and something she probably won't and explaining that to her is probably just going to drain your energy um if it's someone like your parents age i'm assuming you're like my age and your parents are like my parents age 
parents might like people parents of our generation i think they are still a little bit malleable in their mindset personally so you could have conversations with them if they're receptive but i'm saying if they're like being combative and like being rude to you or like draining your energy or pulling you down then i don't think it's worth it even interacting with them or trying to explain it to them that's my opinion um in regards to like dismantling internalized misogyny you should meditate and become more aware of your thoughts and then you'll be more able to see the root cause of your thoughts and like look at them more objectively than like feel so ruled by them um i really really think that helps and just like just pay attention and just watch just watch the way things work you don't, I'm not going to like recommend a feminist book or anything. I know everybody always wants me to do that. I don't really read those very much. I did take a gender studies course in college and had to read obviously all the shit that you would read in a gender studies class. So I know, you know, the Audrey Lord quotes and stuff like that. I did read one book by Roxane Gay called Bad Feminist, which I really liked, but it's not necessarily like a feminist book. It talks about lots of things. It's just a bunch of short essays. Um, but I most of what I know has been acquired through paying attention. So there's that. Um, next question. Hey Kira, I saw your recent TikTok and it opened my mind. You spoke about how you feel masculine or masculinized around a group of white women. It often, it opened my mind because I can totally see the gender binary intersecting with racism at that point, the point where you are masculinized. It's like because of capitalism, products are made and advertised in a specific way that is targeted towards white women. Since white women tend to be the most beautified and placed in a spotlight, even in films and TV. So the group of white women see these girly things as products, sorry, girly things, parentheses, products as something made for them that defines their femininity, parentheses, especially in the context of the club. So it's like being... It's like because you're a POC, you are placed outside of this definition of femininity, this white Caucasian definition, but traditional Western thought tends to make sense of things in a binary way. So anything that is not white capitalist femininity is placed into the field of masculinity. This person sent me this and I was like, I want to talk about this on my podcast because that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I agree with you know, white supremacy and racism really do influence like the way people see gender. And what she's referring to, I, I made a TikTok talking about how I feel that I've only ever been made to feel masculine around white women. If I'm around anybody else, they've never made me feel that way or never alluded to me being that way. Um, in fact, like men perceive me as very feminine. So I've always been a little bit confused when I was around white women, they'd be like, oh, like you're so, you're so intimidating. You're so masculine, strong, all this stuff. It's been weird to me. And I, I wasn't sure if it's, if me, if it's me changing in different situations or if it's just the perspective of the person is changing so much that they perceive me so differently. Um, and yeah, everything that that person said, spot the frick on spot the frick on um there's a there's a definition of white femininity that i don't fit into and causes a lot of white women to perceive me as masculine i think um and that has nothing to do with me uh i also think it's interesting because i do know some people who or i've seen some people who i know vaguely these people i don't know them in real life but via internet um i know some people who will go as they them to white women or any i think anybody other than black women i think i think or it could be black people it's one or the other but i think i've seen both though i've seen like some people go no i think it's anybody but black women actually some people go, some black identifying people go as, go by they, them, if it's a white person addressing them, 
or anybody other than a black woman and then they go by they them or she her to black women and I think that is I can't connect the dots I can't I I really don't have the words to articulate how those are connected but I think that they are they definitely are like think about it <laughs> I can't, I literally don't have the words to describe how me feeling masculinized by white women is adjacent to how some black people want to be referred to as they them by white people and people other than black women and she her by black women. But I know that that makes sense together at the same time. So yeah, that's my answer to that. Last question. Hey, I effing love you and hearing all your takes on your podcast. You said you listen to a lot of spiritual podcasts. Do you mind sharing what those are? I've always had trouble finding spiritual podcasts that didn't feel, for lack of a better word, shallow, whitewashed, millennially. Um, yeah, I'm going to my podcast app right now. The spiritual, I don't like listen to a whole lot. I have probably two good ones. So the Soul Tribe podcast, great fantastic and dropping gems with debbie brown in incredible simply incredible i think i really want to be debbie brown when i grow up like honestly like literally if you looked her up too you'd be like yeah like yeah she's kind of just everything that i want to be when i grow up um while we're here the other podcasts i listen to are girls gotta eat um good moms bad choices they're funny they're so funny. They're just, they're just funny. Um, uh, what is her podcast called? Catherine, I always forget her last name. Hold on, I have to go to the show. Um, Catherine Ryan telling everybody everything. Her voice is so soothing to me. Her voice is like very, uh, she's Canadian, but she's British. She lives in, she lives in the UK now and she has like this interesting sounding voice. Like I, her voice is soothing, but she just, she speaks like halfway British in her like intonations, but she's obviously Canadian at the same time. So I don't know. I just enjoy her voice. Um, oh, I actually have another spiritual podcast. Um, it's Tara Brock, Tara Brock's podcast. She's beautiful. And then On Being with Krista Tippett is another good one. I actually had more. I just haven't listened to those ones in a while because they're not as like engaging like they're not as like exciting or like funny they're very much like just spiritual um but they don't they're not like spiritual in the bad way like you mentioned like millennially whitewashed whatever they're very they're very deep and they're very well researched but it's like less of like a an, a, an exciting thing to listen to if that makes sense so i just don't listen to it as much but they are good they are good um i think that's it for this week's podcast Thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Kira Bria so you can get notified whenever I post something new, when I post a new YouTube video or podcast. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. And share it with your friends. Share it with your friends. I wanna get to 5K, but I really wanna get to 10K by the end of the year. So if you could help me out with that, that'd be amazing. Um, yeah, and just, you know, rate this podcast five stars if you're listening. Give the video a like if you're watching. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.